Okay, welcome to this video. What is this video about? Uh, this is the long-awaited, somewhat long-awaited, maybe not awaited at all, um, third part in a series of videos about smart contracts and directly related to the Juno um, smart contract platform um, on the Cosmos, in the Cosmos ecosystem. So this video is gonna be about the anatomy of a smart contract and hopefully uh, it should close the loop on the final part of the uh, smart contract life cycle we've been talking about. Okay, so in the previous two tutorials, we went a little, we showed you how to just deploy a meme coin using the Cosmos and Examples repository for an ERC20 coin. Um, we then showed a simple production ready contract, uh, the CW1 subkeys one, I believe, in Cosmos and Plus. And for this one, we're going to basically step through some of the concepts in the CW20 base contract, uh, again from Cosmos and Plus, which is a uh, production grade contract provided by Confio, the authors of the Cosmos module. Okay, so just in case you need a little refresher, the life cycle uh, of a contract is compiling. So that was what we covered in those first two. Storing on the blockchain. Uh, again, we've covered those in the first two. Instantiating. Uh, and we also covered those in the first two. And then uh, executing commands via messaging um, or via queries. Now, those last two we did cover a little bit in the last two, but we're going to go into some more depth this time. There's also a final part of lifecycle, which is migrating when the version of the engine underneath the library changes. We're not going to cover that in this tutorial, but you should be aware of it. Okay. So there's three main components uh, in understanding how a smart contract works. So the first is messaging, the second is querying, and the third is state. Uh, messaging and querying have a lot in common. So what are they? Well, um, so we're in the CW20 base folder. Unfortunately, I can't make the sidebar any bigger. I've made the code very big. Um, but so you can see this is uh, an example contract. Um, you can see like a cargo Tommel, which has all of the uh, dependencies of this contract. You can see them all in there. Um, just as if we uh, you know, initialize one ourselves from the template. And then in the source folder, we'll find our actual contract code. So the, the other thing you should be aware of is this schema folder here. Now in the other tutorials for CW1 subkeys and for the ERC20, we used these JSON schema files to see what the options were available to us when we actually call the contract. So when you call a smart contract uh, written with uh, Cos and Wasm, you pass it arguments in JSON. Um, that's JavaScript object notation, not any other meme that you might make out of that. So, for example, you can see the instantiate message here, and it has in JSON schema format all of the things that are required, for example, decimals, initial balances, name, symbol, and then uh, when you see the properties, you can see exactly what those are, and then each one of these namespace definitions uh, will be defined later like that. Okay, so you can step through that in your own time if you're interested in how that all fits together. Um, the main thing to be aware of those is that these are generated from code that we write. So they're auto-generated and you use the cargo schema instruction to regenerate them when you change the contract code. So first of all, messages. We said messages and queries are important. So messages are um, essentially, th you can think of them as writes, okay? That's not quite right, but uh, it, it, it serves enough of a purpose. And queries are exactly what you think they are based on that they are queries, that is, they are reads, okay? So those are kind of the three fundamental things. You'll, do, you'll send messages to a write state, and you'll send queries to read state. And then obviously the third important thing out of messages, queries, and state is state, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is in fact the state of the program of the system that is written to the blockchain via the contract, okay? So we've got here, uh, this message you'll have seen before, uh, the instantiate message. We used it when we interacted with these contracts in the previous uh, tutorials. And this is the uh, message that you send to the contract when you want to create an instance of it. So first of all, remember we compiled, 
we stored it on the blockchain, and then we instantiated the contract. The, the, the crucial thing here is that there is a, a single addressable instance of the contract created, and that's the one that you're going to address in the future. And that's what the instantiate message does. It passes arguments that are unique to this instantiation of the contract. Uh, in this case, a name, a symbol, decimals, initial balances, mint, and marketing. And you'll notice these are all very similar to what we were talking about uh, and using with the ERC-20 uh, contract, because at the end of the day, we are just creating a CW-20 uh, uh, coin, right, rather than an ERC-20 coin, and the structure for it is similar. Okay, cool. So that's an instantiate message. There are other messages. But the other messages that we're going to look at are actually defined elsewhere. So this is um, basically an instance of a contract. So you, this is the custom code for a contract that defines its logic, its behavior, all that kind of stuff. Um, and you, know, you can see a bunch of stuff in here about, you know, let's say, increasing an allowance, as this function uh, will tell you. But there's some shared logic and shared sort of data structures and stuff that will be the same for every CW20 based contract. And those are held within Cosmosm Plus in the packages folder. So this is where the library code is, if you like. So if we go into packages, so basically that, that's our instantiate message. We talked a little bit about that. So see the other messages. Let's go and have a look in um, the CW20 package. Again, source folder. Let's go and look in message.rs. Okay, so here we can see all the other messages that are related to uh, working with a CW20, right? So transferring, in this case, a recipient, um, a string, which is a, a account, um, and an amount, which is a UINT 128. Um, so transfer and burn, and then send, um, and then uh, some you know, increase allowance, decrease allowance, transfer from, send from, which is the kind of uh, proxy approval stuff. Um, and then uh, minting. Um, so some of this stuff you'll notice it says, oh, there are actually extensions. And so again, this is uh, additional functionality that's sort of built into the actual package that you can then import into contracts that you want to use and examples. Uh, so the example contracts obviously have example implementations of how that would go for you, okay? Um, we also were talking, so that's, that's messages. There's a variety of these here and you'll see an implementation for, for example, send, transfer, increase allowance. So we saw increase allowance was here. Uh, in contract.rs, we will probably see, uh, so instantiate obviously, so that's our, um, our entry point. We'll come back to that in a second, uh, which uses that message um, and we will see uh, some other stuff. So execute is our other entry point, uh, one of three. The final one you can probably guess is query. Uh, and then you can see, right, so these execute messages are the same as those messages that we already saw in the package. You know, so transfer, burn, send, all that stuff. Transfer, burn, send. And we're going to see that they're defined uh, in under this execute message. When we go to message, we'll see that uh, they are actually imported from the underlying package as execute message, which is why that they're used in that format um, in this handler. So the other thing to mention at this point is that we've talked about um, instantiation and messaging, which are both types of message, and we've talked about querying. You'll notice that all three of these functions, so execute is the function that handles uh, messages that aren't instantiation. Instantiate is the uh, the hook that handles the instantiate call. And you'll notice that those are all uh, tagged uh, with the config macro as entry points. Um, that's because they are the external entry points into the contract. Think of them as a little like, like a main function, I suppose, in, in a different um, paradigm. Uh, and you will see as we go on to talk about querying, um, that query is down here somewhere. There we go, entry point, query, and you'll see this across every uh, contract. You'll see the different um, variations on the same thing. Now, um, and then here are all our query messages, and I'll show you where those are in a second. The only other thing to be aware of is that this returns standard result binary, um, 
because of the underlying um, hooks in the Cosmos SDK. Uh, that's what they expect for query messages. Whereas the rest of them, the message passing ones, uh, functions that is, um, return a result type, um, which is the, it's, it's conceptually similar to an either type if you've worked with algebraic data types before, um, which returns a, a response on success and a contract error on failure. Contract error is defined um, here in error within the contract and you can extend other types uh, to help you from other contracts um, and other libraries that build on Cosmwasm. Um, and the response type is essentially, again, a wrapper around the underlying event um, and the most simple re response type is sent by the instantiate message, I think. So there's instantiate, and then right at the bottom here, we see response default, um, because we don't, nothing really gets sent back to the client. However, um, if you see something like execute transfer, you'll see that, so okay is the wrapper for the result type, so instantiates a result type, if you like, um, but taking that uh, response branch, um, which is analogous to the right branch of an either, confusingly, um, if you've worked with either types. So the OK um, returns an OK rather than an error, so a response rather than a contract error, and it returns uh, this um, res that's been built up over these previous lines, which is essentially yeah, that underlying event, right? So uh, in the most simple case, you can do that response default like here on line 151. Um, and if you need to build up your own response to send something back to the client, you can do this. Um, and there's a whole API for what responses can take. You can build one up and then return it uh, wrapped in a uh, response. And this contract error here um, will be thrown. Um, there's an example of it. So there you go, return error which um, wraps uh, whatever's inside it inside um, an error type. And then the, uh, sorry, return, it, it takes the error side of a result type and returns what's inside. In this case, a contract error, which we can see contract error, invalid zero amount. Okay, there's a little bit of a deviation into error types and stuff. Um, there's some details on this. Um, I've actually just finished writing um, some more details on this in the Cosmwasm docs, which hopefully will be out by the time of 1.0 if you want some more details. And obviously there's people a lot more knowledgeable than me about the inner workings of Cosmwasm that can help you if you have more in-depth questions. Okay, so let's quickly go and look at those query type, query messages and where they come from. So again, if we go into message.rs, I think they're all defined in here rather than the package because they're custom for this contract. Yeah, okay, so, uh, and again, you see a macro with serialization helpers and JSON schema helpers, so that, that gives you the cargo schema command. Um, and yeah, so like a, a really common thing is you, you instantiate a coin, uh, you purchase some in a native currency and um, you get returned some coins and this then uh, you might want to actually find out, find your balance in the uh, newly minted CR, CW20 coin. Um, so you pass in your address as a string, you get your balance back. Okay, uh, that's how that works. And you can obviously define any type and then, uh, so any uh, message shape and then uh, make a entry in the query handler that fits it and then write a function that then handles that particular uh, case. So these are just like, so execute and query are both handled with a matcher um, that has to be exhaustive for all of the different types that it handles. Um, exhaustive just means you have to cover every single case, right? So it means that when you pass something of the right shape, which is validated to be the right shape, the contract will definitely be able to handle that in some way. Okay, cool. We've handled messages, we've handled querying. Now we're gonna talk about state. State is actually relatively complicated. So you can, uh, if you're interested in much more complicated examples of state, you'll probably want to go and have a look in the CW, in the Cosmism documentation. But we'll quickly go over sort of how it works. So in essence, the most simple thing to say about it is this is where we're writing data to the blockchain, okay? So in this case, uh, we saw when we instantiated uh, the contract, we had some token info, 
that was sent, okay? So this struct um, for token info defines the data that we write in that instantiate case. Um, and we can see this in action uh, when we find the instantiate method and we can see that we build some data uh, we say that it's of the token info struct, which we've imported from state.rs. Um, and these are all just, uh, this is all data that's come through in JSON, been deserialized from that instantiate message. Um, and then it's saved to storage. Uh, and, and then obviously there's a, there's a reference there. Um, and th this is all just um, Rust borrowing semantics. So if you're curious about that, um, Essentially, only one thing in Rust can ever own a variable at any one time, so you have to um, pass a reference um, and there's a borrow checker and lots of cool stuff, but um, if you see ampersands, um, don't worry about it too much. Uh, the compiler will save you having to worry about that too much if you're quite unfamiliar with it. Okay, um, So this is saving it to, uh, to storage, and let's quickly just show you then where that's defined. That's defined down here, uh, where we are saving a single item, um, this is from the underlying, uh, there's a Cosmwasm storage um, uh, plus, um, actually you can see it's popping up there. So you can see item, the definition of it, um, pretty straightforward-ish. Um, so there's a, there's a library called Cosmwasm plus storage, uh, which defines different types of um, storage things you can have. Uh, storage shapes that you can have, I suppose, uh, like a map. So this is uh, like the left-hand side. Uh, this is very simply, like you want to look up a balance, right? So um, there's a mapping of address on the left-hand side, uh, you know, key value structure and value and balance on the right-hand side, you know, just as a value. Um, so that's and there, uh, that's a good way of um, uh, you know, structuring that data such that it's easy to, to retrieve later. And you can do more complicated things like this is a tuple of two addresses and then an allowance response. Um, an allowance response uh, shows you uh, the, well, yeah, the allowance, the kind of the proxy allowance that, that a, a, an address can spend, if you like. Um, so main thing here, uh, let's use a simple example of an item. So it's an item, it's a token info, which is this thing here. So it's expecting to write something of that shape to the blockchain. Um, and then the, uh, yeah, so again, it's just a item um, which is taken here from storage plus. Um, so this is the type signature, item token info, and this is the actual implementation, uh, item new, um, and then token info, right? So then when that's queried out, there's a token info response, which is, um, so, our token info has name, symbol, decimals, total supply, and mint. The token info response just has name, symbol, decimals, total supply, because um, mint is this minter data, which is an option. It's only relevant, um, I think, when it's being written. Whereas when you're querying, you actually just want this uh, this metadata, essentially, right? So. That, those are the fields that you'll get back when you run that query. So in the contract, what we're going to see is that we're going to load from depth storage the token info, but only use the fields that are relevant for creating that type of struct, which again is our standard result token info response. And then as we saw before, so standard result also has this OK uh, handler to create a successful response and the response is returned there, token info response. And so there you are, you've seen the entire flow from writing to the state and then querying it out. And that's essentially, there is obviously infinite subtlety to all these individual bits, but essentially that flow of message to state and then back out via query is the whole ball game when it comes to a Cosmosm contract. Okay. I've gone over quite a lot within those three concepts of just Cosmwasm, uh, messages, querying, and state. So if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. Uh, if you're really stuck, obviously come find us on Discord, that's Juno and Cosmwasm. Uh, and if there's any other subjects you would like covered in a video, then also leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. Okay, that's about it for this very, very dense video. Party on, write smart contracts, 
get involved in Hack Juno until October the 1st when the chain launches and uh, yeah, stay safe out there.